At its monthly meetings here in Strasbourg during the EP sessions, the Intergroup for Animal Welfare has discussed a few of the most critical things when it comes to animal welfare in Europe again. I have asked three um, personalities about uh, things going on in the Intergroup. First, I've asked a Polish MEP about his impressions after being several times in Romania to inspect the brutal killing of dogs over there. Then I have asked an American specialist about her fight for um, dolphins and, um, and organs. Should they be kept in captivity at all, yes or no? And finally, I am talking to the president, at the moment at least, of the intergroup about his experience, his background and his hopes. First of all, and you might hear some singing in the background, that's a choir, that's one of the things which are so nice about this place. There are also cultural events going on here. Um, I'm asking the Polish MEP what happened since he was last time in Romania. Mm, after my second visit in Romania in the end of January, mm, and after my observation that the uh, situation of the stray dogs in Romania is very bad, especially in the shelters, uh, in which I observed a lot of dogs in very bad uh, condition and uh, uh, I observed that uh, dogs are killed in these shelters. I sent, after the, this visit, I sent a letter to the Prime Minister of Romania informing him about my observation and uh, uh, calling him to change the situation. Unfortunately, to this time, there is no answer of the Prime Minister. It's about one month uh, ago I sent this letter. But there are two positive things in European Parliament. The first uh, positive thing is that uh, in the uh, Ms. Paulsen report about the animal health strategy was adopted a uh, new solution by the Committee of Agriculture and we are waiting for the plenary uh, session in April. But in the Committee of Agriculture was uh, adopted, uh, adopted uh, the new uh, rule that uh, uh, to year 2000, uh, 2018, each member state should introduce the system of uh, registration of dogs. In short, <laughs> shorter time, it's not not uh, impossible to introduce it. It, uh, it requires a lot of uh, preparing, uh, preparatory work, and, and it is uh, realistic realistic uh, date. It is one question. The second question is, the second, the, the second positive thing is that uh, I hope that uh, in the next meeting of the Committee of Agriculture will be adopted uh, a resolution and uh, uh, after that will be pro probably, I hope, will be adopted by the Parliament, a resolution calling uh, European Commission uh, to change uh, European rules and to um, open possibility to finance uh, stray animals, uh, humanitarian uh, reduction of stray, uh, stray dogs uh, from the, uh, using European subsidies. This is very important because uh, uh, it would be, uh, after, after this solution will be possibility to propose for the Romanian authority to help them uh, to solve the problem of stray dogs in humanitarian way under European control. It is very important. And uh, I hope that uh, to the, uh, before the end of this term, uh, Ms. Paulsen report will be adopted and this resolution will be adopted. Two positive things in the Europa European Parliament, not only for Romania. Dr. Naomi Rose, you have come from Washington to Europe to tell how to treat dolphins and Orcas, why? Well, I'm not coming to Europe to tell you how to treat your whales and dolphins. I'm coming to give you some information so that Europe can make its own decisions. I feel very strongly as a marine mammal biologist that these animals do not belong in captivity. I don't think we can provide them with an environment that is adequate to, to meet their needs. So I'm providing that information to you. I'm providing you both my own personal observations and the science that is out there and hopefully Europe will then make some decisions that speak to the animal's welfare. How could we change things in Europe when there are that much money involved in showing these animals? I think that's one of the problems is that how much money is involved. There shouldn't be a commercial aspect 
to maintaining these animals in captivity. You don't make that kind of money off of tigers or elephants or chimpanzees or birds or reptiles that are in zoos. So why are they making so much money on whales and dolphins? People love to see these beautiful animals doing these wonderful tricks, but it is hurting the animal's welfare that they are so valuable in an economic sense. When you put that kind of price on the animal, their welfare is going to come second. That's just logic. In which way could things be improved, or can they be improved at all? I do think that there are some short-term steps that can be taken that would improve their welfare. One aspect is to stop taking them from the wild altogether. If they can't be maintained through captive breeding, all right. Another possibility is to say certain species shouldn't even be captive bred, and I think orcas are on that list. They are too large. They are too socially bonded, too family bonded to stay in captivity and thrive there. You're the president of the Intergroup for Animal Welfare, still I could say, because it's coming to an end now, uh, and it was just a short time. Yeah. What's your background for uh, being that enthusiastic about animal welfare? Yeah, that's correct, I'm, I'm winter president, yeah, after Danny Jorgensen, who, who was working on this five years, and he was excellent, so was just part of his heritage to, to work for animal uh, animal welfare integral but uh, background yes uh, I, I in a in a galaxy far far away <laughs> I was ethologist and I was working on on starting of of uh, law on animal welfare in Czech Republic so this was quite interesting for me to work a couple of months for this interview in which way do you think an intergroup can make a change. In which way do you think it can have that much influence on the Commission, for instance? <laughs> it's, uh, you don't have a simple discussion. No, this is very difficult. We can develop a pressure, political pressure, and this can be, as you have seen today, on the, on the issue of donkeys in Spain, this can be decisive in, in uh, moving uh, local or regional or maybe state administrations to do something which is good, which is which is in proper way. So this is the first. Second is to give a opinion to the Commission that MEPs are interested, that the public is interested, and maybe raise a bit of awareness between MEPs. This is, I think, our special goal and special issue we have to deal with: to raise awareness between members of European Parliament. Which way do you think that um, the public knows about what's going on here when it comes to animal welfare? Um, is there, isn't there a lack of uh, communication out of this house? It is. It's true. That's absolutely correct. But it's not only about this intergroup. It's about the work of the whole parliament. Yeah? Especially in, in such a Eurosceptic country like this mine, for example, Czech Republic. There is a lack of information, and I, I, I simply don't know why it is. We are also very, very often we are accused that it's our fault as MEPs that we don't inform people. It's not true. Simply, it's uh, it's a role of, of local media in member states, and in some member states, it's a very difficult situation because I have my suspicion that also there is a pressure from local government not to inform too much what's running in European Parliament. The same is for animal welfare integrity. So it's a pity and we have to work on this and, and maybe we have to, and, and I do use, uh, social media to raise awareness and here we can raise up the demand from the public to have an information for, from, from the EU, from the EU structures. And this is, a, this is a possible solution to raise up the demand of public for these informations. Final question, um, the contact to the commissioner who is who's said at least to be responsible for animal welfare. Could you describe that um, relationship existing or not? Yes, I, I can, of course. It's very simple to describe. It's a very sad story. <laughs> I can set, say that, that we had quite good the contact with, with former Commissioner Dali. Uh, now with, with, I would say, autumn Commissioner <laughs> Boards, it's a very difficult situation. And uh, I'm afraid that I can state very, very simply that it's a similar situation is, is with the Commission as a whole. It's very difficult sometimes to discuss uh, issues which are which are 
important for us as MEPs to discuss it with the Commission. And we are trying hard to transfer opinion from the public to the Commission. And this is our task, this is our goal, but it is very difficult. And I think that the mistake is the, or, or, uh, or problem is not always on our side. Yeah. I don't want to, to criticize Commission on the very end of, of, of this Commission, but I hope the next Commission will be more willing to hear from us and from European people.